I have been conducting a little, uh, a little social experiment. Mm-hmm. Me too. And yeah, but mine didn't involve napping. <laughs> and a little social experiment that everybody, either they just well, well, I'll tell you what it is. Because, I mean, I even brought it up at Old Guy Coffee at Strong's on Saturday morning, and it was just, it was con- it concluded it was just a bad idea. And if you remember, last week I talked about Nick Saban. And I said to a bunch of people over the last week or so, I would just in casual conversation bring up Nick Saban, and I said, what if for not for a year, mm-hmm. not for six months, not for 30 days, What if just for one week, in fact, not even a whole week, just a Monday through Friday, a work week, what if you lived your life, what if you worked like Nick Saban? What if you worked instead of six or eight or however many hours it happens to be? Mm -hmm. What if you said, I'm not going to work less than 12 or 14 hours. I am going to give such a maximum effort when I think there is literally, when there's nothing more I could do at the end of the day. I'm going to work another 90 minutes. Mm. If you lived, I told you, I saw that David Faraday interview. And Nick Saban is, he and his wife are at this cabin in the mountains in Georgia overlooking this beautiful river. And David Faraday on the Golf Channel interviewing Nick Saban says, this place is awesome. This is one of the most beautiful places I've ever been. And Nick Saban says, yeah, I wish I could spend more time here. And it dawns on me, you're Nick Saban. Who's going to tell you you can't? You're Nick Saban. You could email practice schedules in. Nobody's going to bust you up if you Mm miss. The one person, the only person who tells Nick Saban he can't spend as much time at that at that mountain retreat as he wants. Is Nick Saban. Is Nick Saban. Yep. And so I offered this suggestion to people. I guess a total of 10 or so over about a week. And you remember, I I brought this up on Friday with you and Parky. And nobody thought that living their life like Nick Saban was a good idea. Nope. Everybody said, everybody came up with either excuses, and usually, usually it was they told me all the things they'd miss. Like time with their kids or time at church or time time watching television or just it would just be too Friends, damn yeah. hard. Mm-hmm. And nobody, nobody listened to my suggestion, literally nobody, and said, you know, maybe if I live life, my life like Nick Saban for a week, maybe my life would get better. Maybe I would make more money. Maybe I would be a bigger success. Maybe people would notice a change. Maybe I would set a better example for my family or kids or coworkers. Nobody said that. Nobody. Everybody came up and, don't get me wrong, legitimate, valid, pretty solid reasons. Mm -hmm. But everybody had a reason why why, why they either couldn't or didn't want to live their life like Nick Saban. Mm -hmm. Nobody said, Nick Saban's badass. I think if I worked like Nick Saban, maybe I'd be as successful as Nick Saban. Maybe if I could get inside his head a little bit, I'd be a better leader, I'd be a better father or mother or friend or coworker. Nobody said that. Mm. Nobody thinks being Nick Saban is a good idea. Well, here's how I live my life, and I told you this Friday. When when it's time to meet my maker, St. Peter is not going to ask me at the pearly gates how successful I was or how many wins I had at Alabama. St. Peter is going to ask me, how did you live your life? What kind of person were you? Were you good to others? What if St. Peter asks Aaron, what if St. Uh, Peter says to you, Did you get the most out of the gifts that God gave you? Did you try your hardest? Did you do your best? Did you set the best example you could set? For those that I care about and I love, abso freaking lutely Nobody wants to be Nick Saban.